uh, welcome to the the fifth section of the PDP in the Applied Mathematics Seminar. Uh, today we are celebrating 100 lectures uh, with two great uh, results. Christophe Prier at Grenoble University, France, and Philippe uh, Wargett from Federal University of Pernambuco, Brazil. The research, Christophe, uh, will be present, presented by Diego Sevilla University. And Felipe uh, will be presented by Rui Almeida uh, of uh, Berentidou University. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, every, every, everyone. Uh, you, you start, the Diego, please. Okay. Thank you, Professor Mauro. Mm -hmm. uh, the opportunity to introduce uh, Professor Christophe Prier. Uh, so, Professor Christophe, he is a uh, director de recherche uh, du CNRS in, in France. Uh, he did his uh, PhD under the supervision of Professor Jean Michel Coron. Uh, Professor Christophe, he is um, he has supervised um, many. Uh, postdoc uh, research and PhD students. We um, have many publication, more than a uh, hundred of publication and more than one, one thousand of citation. So uh, he is um, an expert in control and stabilization of, of PDEs and uh, and today he's going to talk about uh, stabilization of nonlinear PDE by means of nonlinear boundary control. And Professor uh, Christophe uh, Pierre, welcome to our webinar. And uh, you can start. Um, you can start when you want. Okay. Thanks a lot. Uh for the nice introduction and thanks a lot uh, Juan for the organization of the, this seminar. So it's, I'm very happy to have the opportunity to present you uh, some results. So maybe before starting, I can uh, show you where it's going to be because uh, from Brazil and from Chile, we are, this is very small, very small city in France. So Grenoble is uh, the middle of the mountains. If you, here you can see the Alps. So everywhere around, on my home and on my lab, we have the mountains and we can uh, see the direction of, of the path using the mountains after you, you learn the mountain. So Grenoble is uh, somewhere in the south between, uh, between Marseille, Monaco, and very close to Italy. Okay, so, so sorry for this introduction, but I wanted to, to share with you. And so please do not hesitate to, uh, to uh, interrupt me. I, I have many slides, too many probably, uh, sorry, so I have, I have that. Oh, no. Sorry. Okay. Okay, here is my first slide. I know why is it blue. Okay, anyway. So uh, do not hesitate to interrupt me. Uh, so I like uh, also the opportunity to, to interact with you. Uh, so I know that uh, many, many attenders of this seminar are experts on PDEs. So I'm sorry if I am uh, uh, losing your time with uh, things that are maybe uh, too easy or too straightforward for you. But I, I would like uh, also to, to take the opportunity to show you some results on control theory of PDEs. So some, uh, some of you are also experts on that, uh, as uh, Alberto, of course. So maybe first I can give you a, a flavor of what, what is a control theory. So control theory is when we have uh, a nonlinear PD, a nonlinear model, it can be finite dimensional model or uh, infinite dimensional one, that depends on, the, on, the, on some parameters that is called the, the control. So usually the control depends on the time, so that the solution of this uh, Cauchy problem, where here you have the initial condition and here you have the, the, the model, depends on the control U. And here in this talk, I will not uh, consider control BT issues or other uh, 
control objective, I will consider asymptotic stability objective. So the goal is, will be to compute a control U, okay? So that the solutions of this nonlinear dynamics satisfy two properties. And these both properties together will, call, will be called asymptotic stability. So asymptotic stability just means that we have two things, first stability and then attractivity. And uh, no, both properties are, are important. So stability mathematically just means that for any epsilon, which is uh, the, the radius of the ball of the target, there exists a delta uh, radius of initial condition such that if the initial condition is smaller in this, in, is in this ball, then you have that. Okay, so it just means that you, you can, you can uh, control, you can uh, measure the intermediate values for any positive time, you can measure the state. Okay, you can uh, bond the state. So it is a transient property, it is so-called so stability property. And the attractivity is just means that you converge to the equilibrium. So I forget to say that the equilibrium is usually, uh, you can shift the equilibrium and you, so usually we say that the equilibrium is just zero, but of course, the physically it could be different point. So attractivity just means that for any initial condition, you converge to this equilibrium. So you converge as the time goes to the plus infinity, you converge to that. Okay. So this is a stabilization problem. So stabilization problem is to compute a control U so that we have a symmetric stability, okay? So I will do that for uh, several uh, PDEs. And in particular, I would like to emphasize that the, the linear, uh, the, the control will be non-linear because very often I will consider such a non-linear control. So just make, making uh, amplitude limitation of the control as uh, given, by, given by this saturation map. So it just means that you cannot push a lot of energy. You cannot push uh, infinity of energy. You have to, to have, you have to, to bond the, the input that you put in, into your model. Okay, you see the U here is saturating by uh, some level. Okay, I will make that more precise in a few minutes, just to give you a flavor. So in fact, if we consider linear, if everything is linear, okay, and if the model is finite dimensional system, then we have that. So this is the same dynamics as before, z dot equals az plus b uh, u. And here, usually when we have matrices a and b, so this is just an ordinary differential equation, things are very well known, okay? If we, you can compute k, if you have a controllability assumption, property of the pair a, b, you can compute k so that the closed loop system, the system, the solution to this system is asymptotic k stable towards zero. Okay, but in fact, if you put the saturation here, the things are completely different, even for finite dimensional systems. So for finite dimensional systems, there is a large literature dealing with the impact of the saturation on this system. Okay, so if you replace the, the, the control by sat of the control, then the system could be, uh, you, you can lose the global property. Okay, so it just means that there exist it may exist new equilibria. So even if the system has just zero as a equilibrium, just one equilibrium, it may exist new equilibria. It may exist limit cycles, even for finite dimensional systems. You see? So the goal of this, uh, of this, uh, this talk is to, to, to see what happens with PDEs, okay? Uh, in particular, I will review what, what could be done for parabolic PDEs, for nonlinear uh, questions as the curve de Vecht de equation. And I would like to, to, to deal with boundary control and internal control as well. So boundary control just means that the control operator is unbounded in mathematical uh, uh, context. And internal control just means that the control operator, my operator B, is, is bounded, the linear unbounded operator. And I will show you that there, is, there are now, the literature is quite mature, and there is now a, a, large, different, a large set of different techniques to deal with the, uh, the stabilization of uh, PDs. So, okay. Oh, oh, I forgot to say that, of course, the well posedness of the Cauchy problem that I have presented on slide one is, of course, very important. And you have to make, to take care about what, which uh, subordinate space we are considering. Okay. For finite dimensional system, Rn and all topologies are, are equivalent, you know. So, but for infinite dimensional dynamics, things are very complex and very various, and of course, very interesting for, for researchers. 
and we will we'll deal with asymptotic stability for different PDs. Okay, so my, my outline, the outline of this talk will be as follows. So first I will deal with parabolic PDs, and then I will uh, consider uh, different uh, class of equations as the beam equation. And you will see that the, the uh, no, there is a typo there. It should be the wave equation, sorry, excuse me. It should be the wave equation. And then after that, I will, uh, and the wave equation, you will see that there are some connection with the beam equation in this context. And then I will deal with the quarter vector the width equation with saturated control. And I will show you, so part one, two, three are very uh, theoretic, but part four is more applied. And we will see real experiments for fusion control with a PDE model. Okay, so it will be a real application on, a, on in fusion control. So this is outline. So uh, again, I will probably not have time to, to review all these parts. So maybe I will switch uh, part three, or I don't know, it depends on the time. Okay, I will. Uh, please, uh, Juan, do not hesitate to cut me uh, if you if I'm, I'm, too, uh, talking, I'm taking too much time. Okay. So, so first I will uh, deal with uh, parabolic PD. So we know for, for parabolic PD, there is a well-known sturm liouville theory that give you uh, a nice uh, uh, representation uh, along eigenvectors of the, uh, of the dynamics. And we show that uh, common conditions for the controllability will be very useful for the observability and control. So common condition is very famous for finite motion systems, but we, I will show, I will try to show that command condition give us also a good, a good uh, uh, design techniques for, uh, for designing a, a stabilizing controller in presence of saturation. Okay, so, and to do that, we will show that the monotonicity is a crucial property and also use of sector condition for the, for the uh, nonlinear uh, uh, control. And then after I will uh, I will go to the next part. So let us deal first with the parabolic PD. So the parabolic PD so is as follows. So it is just a reaction diffusion equation. So it is just the heat equation. Okay, here I have second derivative with respect to the space variable plus a reaction term. Okay, so the reaction term is just like that. So I have Q, which is minus Q there, a function Q, and plus a constant there. So it is just a constant, just a value. So since Q is assumed to be uh, positive, then the, we have a, a, a reaction term which is uh, concerning the dynamics, okay, which, which makes the solution vanishing towards zero, except that we have QC. And if QC is positive, then you have eigenvalues that are uh, unstable, okay? So P is the reaction term, and uh, uh, sorry, P is the diffusion term, and QC minus Q, we do not know a priori the sign, so it could it is a reaction term that could destabilize the solution. And what about the control? So here the control, I assume that I have just one boundary control. Okay, so, so this is a control at x equal one. So at x equals zero, I just consider the Neumann equation, the Neumann boundary condition. So just to just to, as a as a term model, and at x equal one, I just have a direct boundary condition which is controlled by u. Okay. So this is a usual initial condition, nothing to say more. And here I assume that I have an output. So what is the output? It is just the measure of the state. So of course the, the state at time t depend on x. Okay, so the state is a function, but I do not assume that I know all the function. I just assume the boundary. Okay, I just assume that I uh, can measure the trace of the solution at x equals zero. So this is my function y of t. So y of t is the output and the goal is to, the objective is to design a control u that should depend only on the input y so that the solution of this uh, PDE with the, the, the good u goes to zero, okay? So of course in open loop, what does it mean when if you put u equals zero and if, you, if qc is positive uh, suffisantly large, then there, there are some modes so that the dynamics uh, give you a solution going to plus infinity, okay? So the goal is to, to, to catch, to, to consult this, this, uh, these solutions and to, to compute u of depending on the, on the y so that the solution vanish towards zero. Okay, so I forgot, to, yeah, I forgot I have already uh, deal with that. So this is the heat equation. I control the flux temperature, uh, yeah. 
and I have a measure of the, the boundary temperature. Okay, so there exists only, already a, a, a large uh, literature about uh, finite dimensional controller for diffusion system, and even quite recently. But uh, here, uh, the difficulty is that we have boundary measure and boundary action. Okay, so there is already a classical uh, uh, textbooks and uh, classical references where the control operator and the boundary uh, and the output operators are both bonded operators. But here, you, you see on the previous slide, here you have the trace, you are controlling the trace only. So it is it give you a, a control operator that is unbonded. And the same for the measure. The measure operator is unbonded because it, you, you just measure the, the trace, not uh, the uh, uh, an internal measure. So to, to apply to, to use a strong movement theory, I just make a classical change of variable, which is just very classic. So I just introduce W, which is just given by that. And I, the trick inside of that is that you put the control that is on the boundary inside of the domain, okay? So now, if you look at that, you have U of T and the derivative of U of T. So it just means that you are no more controlling U, but you are controlling with U of T. And U is a new, new state, you see? So the control is, and you can be explicit in the function A and B, but it is not so crucial for today. So I have controlling the previous PD or controlling this one with the U dot is the same, okay? So I will do that. So for strong U with theory, so you, you are all experts on that uh, better than me, by the way. So, but strong U with theory just give you properties, uh, give you uh, eigenvalues and uh, description of the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions of uh, this operator. So here it is just a control, the diffusion operator plus the reaction operator. And we know that we, we, we can not compute explicitly, but we can estimate the, the eigenvalues. And we can show that the eigenvalues of A are simple and increasing, it goes to plus infinity, and they are like N square, if you wish. Okay, they are all uh, uh, simple and separate, and uh, the asymptotic behavior is like N square. And what about the eigenvectors? So we have a, 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 some estimation of the eigenvectors. So the, at x equals zero, the eigenvectors is bonded independently of n, and the same for derivative. No, the same for derivative divided by the square root of lambda n. So it will be, I, I do not, I will not uh, deal with too much details about that, but this estimation given by the two mobile theory will be very useful for us, okay? So if you come back to our problem, in fact, you can deduce from this two Lewis series that there exists only a finite number of unstable eigenvalues. So what does it mean? It just means that uh, due to resurrection, which is given by QC minus Q, and we have Q, which is positive, there exists just a finite number of uh, unstable space, okay? So the, the design method is as follows. We will consider a state feedback flow. We consider a, co a control, we will compute, sorry, a control which is just computed on the first unstable modes. And then we will, uh, we will since we cannot, uh, we, since we do not measure all the state, we, need, we will use an observer. So what is an observer? It's just an, an estimation, it's just an additional dynamics to estimate the first mode. But, but in fact, what is very interesting for us is that there is N0 modes to be stabilized, but we have to design an observer with a larger number of modes. So this will be uh, this capital N variable. And then we have to look on the closed loop system. But of course, the closed loop system, since there is a coupling between all modes, you, you, you will have an infinite dimensional system to be, to be handled. So let us try to, to, to apply this method. So to do that, I just write the, the dynamics mode by mode, okay? So the dynamics by my mode, remember that I control the U dot, so my new, Control is the V, and U is just a, 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 a new state given by the dynamics U dot equals the control. So here it is just the projection of the previous dynamics along the nth mode. So to do that, it's very easy. You have just to take the L2 uh, scalar product, and you have to some uh, values A n and B n. Okay, and here it is the output. This is the same output as before. It is just the trace. You see. So here it is, I just write the PD as an infinite number of ODE. There is no, nothing magical here. 
Well, there is nothing magical in my talk, by the way. <laughs> okay. But, uh, okay, so this is, this is quite easy. And now let us consider the first N0, uh, N0 uh, modes that, that are maybe unstable, okay? So in the previous uh, infinite dimensional system, first I focus on the finite dimensional unstable part, which is just given by this dynamics, okay? Since this is a finite dimensional part, I have just two matrices, A1 and B1, here, v, v is just my, my control. So here, if you wish, it is just the truncation of my infinite number of equations and the same for A1, okay? And mu, mu i is just the reaction term. So here I have maybe some terms on the diagonal that are uh, positive. So that A1 is not st stable. And what about the, the controllability? So, okay. Uh, if you take a textbook uh, on a finite dimensional linear system, it's very easy. You have the, the Kalman criterion for controllability. And the uh, controllability of a pair of matrices, you have just to take the B1 and to, to take A1 times B1, A1 squared times B1, etc., up to the order N0 minus 1. And you have to compute the, the determinant. The determinant is just this van der Mond, the determinant multiplied by this quantity. And Remember the strong levy theory, we have that uh, the lambda i's, the eigenvalues are all distinct. So it just means that you, it just implies that mu i are distinct. And in fact, it just means that you have controllability if only if this product is different to zero, since this one determinant determinants is different to zero. So, uh, and we can check that easy computation gives you controllability. Okay, I can skip that. And what about observability now? So observability, remember that I do not observe all the states. So I just observe the trace. So I come back to the definition of the observer, observer, uh, the output, so my output is that. So I have an infinite sum. So let us just for concrete the infinite sum up to the order n, n zero, sorry. So I have this matrix C zero. Okay, so here I have a finite dimensional systems with this matrix C0, which is just truncation of the output operator, you see? And what about the observability? It is very easy. You have to, to compute the Kalman matrix, uh, uh, Kalman criterion for the observation and give you this, condi this condition. So since phi i at zero is different for, to zero for all i, then you have observability. So what does it mean? Just means that you, you can compute uh, matrix L, so that A0 plus LC0 is the limit. So it's okay for me. So we have observability. So now, what could be done? So let us mix uh, both, the, both the controller and the, 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 the observation. So by mixing both, we, we got this quantity. So we have to, to, uh, to design an observation controller, which is just an additional dynamics. And I need to, to observe more than just N0. I, I have to go to up to the order N. And so we get the following structure. So in here, you see that it depends only on the output. You see here, you have the output. Here, it is an extra dynamic that I know. And so I, I have my control, which is V of T, that depends only on the output. So this is the usual uh, uh, construction inspired by Sak Sakawa, which is a science, very good science uh, paper. In, uh, in the 80s, and we can uh, check, we can consider then after the observation error. And let us just follow what, what could be done as, uh, as uh, done in this, this paper. So to do that, I, I have just to write the dynamics in terms, <coughs> sorry, in terms of the observed, observer state, which is my W hat, okay, which is just an observation of W, and my error system. And what is not very uh, straightforward for, uh, for us when we, we did that with Hugo Lachemi is that we have to scale the error. And we have to scale the error depending on the eigenvalues. So this is done here. And I have these dynamics for the error. And the, in the previous slide, I have the dynamics for the observer state. And by combining both, I, I got this, uh, this big vector. And of course, here I have a PD, okay, I have uh, here a finite dimensional systems, but I have here the impact of the overall modes, okay? So to, to be honest, uh, using Kaman criterion, I just can just deal with this matrix F, uh, calligraphic F, 
But of course, it is coupled with the PDE. So I have to consider the PDE coupled with this finite dimensional system. And this is done uh, in, in, uh, in the next slide. So I would like to, to warn you about the scaling, but I say that already. And we got the following conditions. So let K and L be uh, so that the, both matrices are stable and uh, with a real part of eigenvalues smaller than that. Then we have a matrix conditions uh, so that uh, we have asymptotic stability property. Oh, sorry, I, I, okay. Uh, I see that the end of the theorem is cut. I have to, to, to correct that. I'm sorry for that. So it just means that, okay, if I can design, there is no uh, techniques to design K and L, to design a controller and observer, so that the solutions, so the solution that is uh, the PD solution plus the observer state plus the new state, which is given by U, which is exponentially And we've reduced the estimation of convergence. Okay, so here I have convergence in the H1 norm for the PD and the L2 norm for the finite dimensional part. Okay, so the main sketch of the proof is by using a Lyapunov function candidate. The Lyapunov function candidate is just the H1 norm, which is just like that. Okay, we here I have lambda n. So in fact, this sum is equivalent to the H1 norm of W. Okay, for uh, uh, quantities larger than n plus one. And here I have just the classical quadratic terms. So if you if you wish, the Lyapunov function candidate is just equivalent to my norm that I have on the previous slide. And then I, I derive the v1 dot, the v dot. So here everything is formal, it's done formal, but you cannot do that precisely. So the v dot is given by that. So here I have the, the finite dimensional part. Okay, no, no, nothing, uh, nothing new. Here in Kalman is, is doing the job. And here I have the, the effect of the PD. So I have infinite number of K of, uh, of term in this term. And of course, if I want to make this matrix negative, it cannot be done because I have this zero here. Okay, this, this matrix, this two by two matrix does not have any sign. So I have to, to use the negativity coming from there to uh, balance with the zero here. And this is done in this slide. So recall that the error on the observation is given by that. Remember, this is the rest of the, my big sum. So I have this quantity. So it is just a Poincaré-like inequality, if you wish. Okay, by, so by doing that, I'm eating a few, a few terms here to cancel the term, to, to add some negativity here. Okay, so it is just my stability condition that I have in my theorem. So assume that there exists that and that, then it's okay. But in fact, it, it, there is no trouble because remember that lambda n goes to plus infinity. So minus lambda n goes to minus infinity. So for n suffisantly large, this quantity is satisfied. This inequality is satisfied for n suffisantly large. You see? So for n suffisantly large, this is OK. And then you have just to select a matrix P and uh, all coefficients so that it, it is OK as well. So you see that this uh, stability conditions are not empty. They are satisfied automatically for n suffisantly large. And it is done in H1 norm, as I said already. And uh, <clears throat> maybe I can skip that. It is just about the numerics. And to show, to, to have an estimation of the, of the n. OK, so the sufficient condition in the previous theorem is not empty. There is always a n suffisantly large so that it works. OK, and you have also a numerically tractable algorithm to compute that. It is not only an existent result, it is also a design method. So I have to, to, go, to go fast because I see that the time is running. So then after that, I, so here at first, it, everything was linear. But so now let us see what happens with a phi, okay? So I put the saturation. So to be more precise, I assume that I, I have a nonlinear function phi that, that satisfies that. So it looks like, uh, uh, so it, phi is the same sign of, as x, so it is like a monotonous, monoton, monoton uh, non-linearity, if you, if you wish, which is bonded, uh, which is like k phi of x, and uh, delta is unknown. Okay, so you have a, uh, you have like a sector condition. Okay, you see that the phi. Maybe I should add a figure. I'm sorry for that. Maybe you can see my hands. Um, so phi of x is 
it's given by some in some sector, okay? Given by this quantity and this one. Okay. So, so the question is now, okay, let us assume that I have designed U on the linear model. What is the impact of that? So the idea is to use the same approach to, to do that. And to do that, I just follow the same trick as before. So the same trick as before, remember that I have the U dot. But in fact, the, the U dot I should derive. So deri deriving phi of U give you phi prime of U. So let us assume that phi prime exists. It is completely differentiable. It's OK. And then I have time U dot. But in fact, there is a big issue there that I would like to emphasize, is that this, if phi is not injective, and in fact, it is a case of saturation. Remember, the saturation is constant for a large value. So if phi is not injective, then this well equation does not have a, I need so unique, does not have a unique solution in terms of the U. So in other words, if you cont control by the V, maybe there, there are many U's that satisfy this equation. You see? So is, is, if phi is not injective, and you, this is the case for the nonlinear map that you would like to, to put in the loop, then the red equation cannot be used for the design of u because it is, does not define u, a unique u. So the trick is that to, to play with both the dynamics and the, and the, the previous uh, scaling. So here I have the, the dynamics of the, the, uh, the observer dynamics in the variable z, okay? So, so before uh, changing uh, the variable. So the trick is to play with both, uh, with and without the change of variables. And to do that, uh, to check that the Kalman controllability and the observability condition still holds, and using the same scaling as before with the appropriate coordinates, and playing with both the system without and without the change variable, we got the suffering result, which has been already done, also done with uh, Hugo Lachemi, and also inspired by Andrei Miroshenko and Fabian Birk in a recent paper. That now I can design the K, I can design the L, so that I have both conditions as before, Kalman condition for contravity and Kalman condition for, for observability. So that for any initial condition in this ellipsoid, so this is an ellipsoid of initial condition. You see that here, the state is L2 times cross R. R is just for the U. So that I have the, this quantity. So here it is just the projection to the to on the end first mode. And here I have the projection. So in fact, since the closed loop system due to the presence of the nonlinearity in the control, there is no hope to get a global result, okay? Since the control is bonded, you cannot get a global result. So you need to prescribe the set of initial condition. And the natural set of initial condition is given by this ellipsoid. So I have here the rest of, the, of my sum. So if the initial condition is in this ellipsoid, then the, initial, the solution satisfies the same inequality as before. Okay, it, it is like, a, like a before, okay? But now we do not have a global result. We have just a local result given by this ellipsoid. And the, the proof of that, okay, I, I forgot. The proof of that is just based on a similar uh, Yapunov function candidate and estimation of the, of the ellipsoid, okay? So now maybe I, I can uh, go to the, the next part if, uh, if you don't mind. I cannot see, uh, I'm sorry. I hope there is no, no question because I cannot see. Uh, then after that, I would like to, to deal with uh, uh, the wave equation. So the wave equation, this is a joint work with Sophie Tarboyash and Joe Gomez da Silva from uh, uh, Porto Alegre. And you will see that we will use uh, different techniques. And maybe after that, I will deal with Cordovec de Wiz if I have time. So here, it is a wave equation with a, a bonded control operator. So it just let us consider the same problem as before, but now with a different dynamics to see what, what could be done, okay? So the wave equation is, is uh, the next one. So you have second derivative of the time equals second derivative of the space plus the my control. So here in this slide this is denoted by F just to say that, okay, the control now here, it depends on T as before, but it also depends on F, on X. So the, my force could be here different to this one. So the bundle condition is here, the initial condition is as follows. So the question, so initial condition of the deflection and the initial condition of the speed, of course, and my quick, how to control that? Control the exact is not very difficult. You have just to consider the energy and you are making the energy decrease. 
But to make the energy decrease, you have just to, good, to select the good sign, okay? So it is just given by this linear control. It is very easy to do that, at least formally, but it could be, of course, uh, very easily uh, done uh, precisely. And we can check that the V dot is given by that. So it is a Lyapunov function, but it's not strict because we do not have an all negativity of the state. We have just negativity of the speed, you see? We, there is no z square. But anyway, it, it is something that we can do, do anyway. We can prove by uh, standard techniques and uh, uh, young proof uh, uh, theorems that we have this exponential stability using the previous linear control. Okay, so you have convergence towards zero using the previous linear control in norm H1 for Z and L2 norm for the Z2. Okay, so you have asymptotic stability as before. And so now the question is, okay, now I have my linear control, what about the non-linear control? So I put the saturation in the middle as before. I put a monotone map here, okay? So saturation is just given by, by that. So you saturate to one or to plus one, depending on that. And around zero, it is just the entity. So in closed loop, you have just that. But here, this is a good sign. So this is very natural to look on the same Yapuna function as before, and you have that. So again, this has, <coughs> this has a good sign. So there is some hope to, to prove the asymptotic stability. And this is something that we did. So I would like also to, to connect with uh, some work of Lazieka and Zainmine and Smelrod, Smel but it is something that we can deal uh, during the discussion. So we got with uh, João Gomez da Silva and Sophie Tarboyas the following work that there exist a unique solution first in, the, in this uh, unique uh, strong solution for suitable uh, initial conditions. So this is the existence result. And to do that, we have just to, uh, to, to use a generalization of lumer phillips theorem. So lumer phillips theorem is very good for, uh, for linear abstract uh, equations. And you, you, there is also the work of Brezis and uh, Barbu and Mied, um, in the very nice book of Miadera, dealing with generalization of lumer phillips as a so-called quantile ligate uh, theorem. So you have just to check dissipativity condition for the nonlinear closed loop system. So the nonlinear closed loop system is just given by that. And plus uh, 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 this condition, which is just a wrong condition. And to do that, it is, it is not so difficult. Maybe I can skip that. So it is just using the multicity of the saturation. So if you use the multicity, it is not so difficult. So the second items, which is a wrong condition, is more difficult. So to do that, we have to deal with a nonlinear ordinary differential equation. So to do that, how to solve a nonlinear boundary condition, uh, ordinary differential equation with two uh, nth uh, condition, we have just to deal with a, a fixed point theorem. So this is some, something that we can do in this particular case, and I would like to, to skip that. So we, are, we can prove that there exists a unique non-homogeneous nonlinear solution to this. Uh, uh, there exists a unique solution to this non-homogeneous nonlinear ordinary, ordinary question with two boundary conditions. So it works. Uh, so we get, uh, after, at the end, we, we, we put also stability property in this norm. It just means that if the initial condition is sufficiently small in this norm, then the solution remains small, small for all t. And together with the attractivity property. Attractivity just means that you converge to zero. Okay? So you can converge to zero to that. And to prove that, we just use the same Lyapunov function as before. And the V1 dot is given by that. So this is a weak Lyapunov yeah, function. So again, we have ZT. We have just negativity in terms of the speed, not, not a strict negativity. So we need to apply the Lassen invariance principle. So the Lassen invariance principle gives you uh, omega limit set, description of omega limit set, and give you a convergence property. And the, the main, uh, main point is uh, to prove a, a canonical embedding from uh, the domain of A towards the state space. Okay, and to, to show that this canonical embedding is compact. So this is the compactness property that we show, and this could be done. Uh, okay, I can skip that. And this gives us with a, a property of the local limit set, and it gives us pro convergence property. And maybe I, I, can, uh, I can spend a few minutes about the, the next, the second uh, case where I have just a boundary control. Okay, so this is a wave equation with a boundary control. So now I will just, just to control the boundary. And you will see that the, the problem is very similar, but in fact, the techniques are completely different. 
So here in the previous slide in the previous part, I use the monodicity of the of the of the saturation. But here I use I will use different tricks. So I have the same dynamics as before, but now I do not have the control. Here I have just the control of the monodicity. Here, same initial condition. So if you consider this energy like it, uh, there is a um, there are two brackets too much. I'm sorry, I should correct that. Again. So if you consider that, so it's just given by the Riemann invariant uh, uh, Riemann variant of the wave equation with uh, this this uh, weight function, then formal computation gives you that this quantity as soon as uh, this boundary condition is applied. So it just means that you have exponential stability if the b has a good sign. So if the b is a good sign, then there exists a mu. This is given that if b is positive, then there exists mu sufficiently small and close to zero, so that this quantity holds, and then you have that. So we have exponential stability. So you see that the picture is completely different as before. So we have a strict dependent function. So now what, what happens with the saturation? So we have these boundary conditions, and we can check that we have that. We have stability and attractivity as well, using in, in suitable space. So the trick is, the, the, the result is the same, but the proof is different. And the proof is, uh, okay, the proof of the well poisonous of the Cauchy problem is not so different, so difficult. But the, uh, the global stability comes from dissipativity of A2, but the attractivity comes from different picture. It comes from the following lemma, which, is give, which give you a semi-global exponential stability. What does it mean? It just means that if you give me a radius of initial condition, then there exists a mu, so that for all initial conditions satisfying this inequality, then we have that. So you see that we have exponential stability, but depending on the radius of initial condition. We do not have global exponential stability, but we have just exponential stability for any ball. And this ball can be as large as you wish. Okay? So the proof of that is, uh, is very interesting, I think. And first, we use, again, the dissipativity and the monotonicity of saturation to show that we have this, both, uh, this function, which is decreasing with respect to the time. And so, since it, it, it is similar, it, it, uh, it is a graph now, okay? So we have this inequality. And then we, we, we can show that if, uh, for all initial conditions satisfying my uh, uh, ball condition on the previous slide with the small r, there exist c different to b, so that this quantity holds. And after that, I would like to use the local sector condition. So, Situation is in, in some uh, in some code, but close to zero. Oh, sorry, I cannot, you cannot see that. Sorry, close to, on the boundary of zero, you can you, you can describe the sector here with dots. You see, so you have this inequality, and this inequality is very important and will be crucial. So if we come back to the v dot, I have this quantity, and I I add I have this quantity here, and I can show that this matrix is less or equal to zero uh, due using the previous inequality using the previous sector condition. So, so that I have V dot smaller than minus V. So you see the proof. You, the proof is that you, you first fix the uh, size of initial condition, and then you show exponential stability. Uh, probably I, I do not have more time, or I do? Please say me. I, I was. You have. Um... Two or three more minutes, if you. Two or three or more minutes. So okay, okay. So this is the end of my uh, uh, part. So I would like also to deal to say that we can also deal with flexible equation with the uh, beam equation with uh, piezoelectric actuators with pointwise actuators, and uh, we can also deal with uh, Cordovec degrees equation. So I will, this is a, a result that is very interesting for me because it is John work with uh, Eduardo Serpa, a Chilean, uh, Chilean colleague and friend, by the way. So, and I would like to say that uh, this is a work where we have saturation. We can consider saturation and in-domain control, and we can also deal with boundary uh, control with uh, saturation. So this is an, a very nice result done with Eduardo Serpa and, and uh, colleagues, uh, dealing with cordovec degrees equation. And as you know, uh, cordovec degrees equation is a nonlinear PD. So, and the techniques is completely different. So it is nice to, to, to see that. And if you want, I can share the slide with you. 
And then, the, okay, I can skip that. And uh, just to, to emphasize what has been done for the application of fusion control. So in, you know, for fusion control, contrary to fission, fission is very dangerous, but fusion is, is nice, <laughs> let's say. And we have a flux dynamics, a diffusion dynamics of the flux with nice input and nice output. So here you can see the guy here. So you have huge, now we are building huge uh, tokamax and uh, fusion uh, experiment. So that we, we have such experiment in, uh, in France, in Switzerland and so on, in US, of course. I don't know if they are in Brazil, maybe. And we have such dynamics. So this is diffusion equation, heat equation, plus the control, okay, which is given by this source, okay, with boundary conditions. And uh, the control problem is as, as in before, and we, we, did, we did with Boyan Markov, with a, a, a PhD student, a nice work with experiments where we can check that we, we got reference, we got convergence toward reference. So here we do not want to converge to zero, of course. Zero is just nothing, no, no energy. So we want to control some to, to control some reference, to reach some reference. And this is done here, you see. And what is very interesting for application is that so it is done for the TCV. TCV is in Lausanne, close to not so far from Grenoble, in Switzerland. And in fact, there are actuators limits. So for, for the TCV, you cannot apply uh, any source. You have just, you, there are some bonds on the control. So you have some saturation in the control. And this is, this, we did that. And what is also interesting is that we have delay in the loop. So we have delay in the loop. So delay, you know that delay system is, is also infinite dimensional uh, dynamics. So it, it asks more complex, more complexity. So this is something that we have done also experimentally. So this is the result of the experimental uh, of the experiment. So maybe I can skip the conclusion and uh, some actual uh, investigation research. So I would like to thank uh, Stick and Sud and Matt and Sud project I, uh, that we did uh, with Eduardo and, uh, and, um, and other Chilean uh, colleagues and Brazilian colleagues. Uh, so I, I got the financial support from a, a chair, but I, I got also a lot of uh, friend uh, support of colleagues and me, and in particular, you can here you, you see Daniel Coutinho. Maybe you know him for uh, from a police. Eduardo Serpa is here, and Joe Gomez da Silva is here. About the PhD students, uh, uh, here it is uh, Nicola, um, Hugo Parada, who is a Chilean guy. Uh, Hugo Parada, uh, under progress, is working on KDV equation. So, unfortunately, I was not, I didn't have the time to present that, but he's, he's doing a very nice work. Uh, with Emmanuel Crepeau, who is here. Okay. So that's, that's the end of my talk for today. Obrigado for listening. Okay. So thank you very much, uh, Christophe, for this uh, wonderful talk. So now we're going to open the turn for questions and comments. So if anyone has a question or comment, please uh, raise your hand or, or type your question uh in the chat or open your microphone okay uh, so i i have uh um some question about um what you present um all all the results that you all the equation that you present are 1D, uh, in 1D. Yes. Yes. So, that's true. Uh, yeah. What about um, high dimensional and and uh, what, what is the difficulty? Uh, oh, this is a very good question. Uh, easy. Sorry. Yeah, this is a very good question. Yes. So. Uh, uh, best to my knowledge, there is no, not so many results for uh, 2D or ND PD with uh, nonlinear boundary control. So, uh, uh, but Nicola Van Springer, the, the guy here, is doing a, is finishing a PhD. So, by the way, he's applying for a, a Chilean uh, chair uh, with Eduardo Serpa, and he he, he has some uh, he applied for a postdoc in Chile, uh, starting next next year. So he's doing a, 
uh, is looking for wave equation in several dimensions, but things are very difficult. And in fact, so we have the wave equation in the domain, also the boundary conditions that could be wave equation in, in uh, less dimension, less dimensional systems. And is, there are many nice work of uh, Lajeka, quite old result of Lajeka, Irena Lajeka, about that. And in fact, okay, if you want, I can give you some references, but uh, Lajeka and uh, Nicola von Springer has proven a result with, with very nice result about uh, exponential stability or polynomial stability. So with in presence of uh, nonlinearity at the boundary as given by nonlinear control, things are very interesting because you can lose exponential stability and get only polynomial stability. So this is something that I, uh, I didn't deal with today or today, but yes, you, some generalization can can be can can be considered, uh, but it is more more involved and also the results are not trivial. You see? Okay, thank thank you. I have I'm another right question. Uh, that let me just check if anyone. No, okay, uh, um, and and. Um, you you say that uh, you have some result for the KDV, right? Yes, yes. And you, you have uh, the uh, the typical nonlinearity y y x, right? This one, yes. Yes, and uh, so uh, the result also holds for for Burgess equation. I mean, um, heat equation with uh, mm, the nonlinear, yes. Uh, I, I, to be honest, I don't know. I didn't uh, look on that. Uh, this is a good question. So maybe if you, okay, maybe you can replace the KDV equation, which is like yes. that. So here you, I have internal control. As for the wave equation, remember the F? So F here depends on the time, also on the X. Maybe you can replace the KDV by the Burgers equation and start with a linear control. So how to dump the Burgers equation with linear control? And see after if you can use the monotonicity of the saturation or something different to get stability, even in presence of saturation. And what, what which kind of stability is it global? It is local. I, to be honest, I don't know. Maybe Alberto can can Alberto is an expert. I don't know if he, he can uh, he know something about that. But uh, me, I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay. So Burger's question, I, I don't know so much. Yes. Um, okay. And um, and uh, my last uh, question is just a curiosity. Uh, uh, it's about uh, uh, this kind of control, no? This uh, saturated control. Yes. Uh, in fact, I don't know if I understand well, but uh, I mean, this is a way in order to incorporate in the control design restriction on the on the side of the control right exactly exactly it's a very interesting way to talk yeah, yeah. so that you is. see if you have a nonlinear dynamics maybe you are tempted to push a large very large control but okay in practice yes. you cannot put what you want yeah okay if you look on the energy you have to make the energy decrease and you have to decrease faster than the instability coming from the dynamics Yes. So the trick is you have to a balance between both. So the balance is given by this ellipsoid for the parabolic case. You see the parabolic case is very easy. And so you, you can estimate the local, the local property, which is just yes. given by the, some ellipsoid. So I, I was maybe too fast for that, but uh, you, you see the, the ID. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, if you start close to the, close to the uh, equilibrium, even in the presence of uh, limited actuators, limited control, then you can control. But you, there is no hope to have large, uh, to have global result because uh, the, the control is bounded. So you cannot uh, uh, counteract the instability that appears uh, naturally, you see? You can just do that locally. And after that, there is a large, large literature about enlarging and uh, maximizing the size of the solid. And the oh. maximizing the size of the solid is just given by this P, see this matrix. So the enlarging the solid is just, okay, how to design the my control so that the P is very large. Uh, no, so, so that the solid is very large and so the P is very small, you see? 
So you have to reduce the pitch so that the HLE is large. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So there, okay. there, is a play, there is a play with that. Yes, okay. So thank you very much, Professor. Yeah, you're Indeed. welcome. Uh, Thanks a lot again for the, for the invitation. It was a nice pleasure talk. for me. I, I hope to visit you in Rio de Janeiro soon or in Chile soon. Yes, yes. yes. I'm sure you are welcome. <laughs>